from 1st of January, and here we are, standing on the 31st of December, 10.38 p.m., and you're still breathing. Somebody did a great job in keeping you alive all these days. I know that um, this thing about crossover 31st night has become a tradition for the church and become a bit religious sometimes. But not all traditions are bad. Not all religions are bad. It is a good tradition to come at the close of the year to say, thank you, Lord. And to say, Lord, I'm trusting you as I step into next year, that you will be with me. That's why we're here tonight, to give God thanks and then to look forward to what he will, he will do in the year coming. I'm um, standing here today. I feel excited because I've seen the hand of God. Nobody can tell me what God cannot do because I've seen him. He's been faithful throughout this year. And I know he will be faithful in your life. So I'm just going to share a few thoughts with you what I'll be, be praying for some days now and trust to ask him the Lord, you know, where, what are you saying? Why are you leading us? And I know a, every, we go to different people, different churches and individually we pray, asking God for a word for the year. It's a good tradition again, you know, pursue that. Of you. There is a, a now word for you or something God wants you to pursue in this year. And that's all good. And you, you, you will find that as you begin to hear what God is saying, different people will be saying different things. But there will be a unity of the spirit. You see a common motif running through what different people are saying. Saying that God will say, okay, um, God has not changed. It doesn't, it, I, I'm going over the place here now. God does not work by our calendar. Do you understand that? It doesn't start in January and finish in December. No. God is timeless. And so he's not keeping time. But he has programs and plans that he has in every time. He gave us times and seasons so that we learn to reset. I can tell you, if there are no Christmas and there are no end of the year, some people will not have a holiday. They keep working and working and working until they go under. So God puts seasons and times for us to recalibrate. So, so I feel that God wants to, but I will say a lot of things and he must speak to you, whatever, you know, that so um, resonates with you, grab it. See that as a word from the Lord for you a noun word for you. And so, Lord, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you. Thank you for bringing us to the gateways of 2024. And I'm confident that you brought us this way, this far. You opened the gates and we walk in into a glorious 2024, into all the things you prepared for us. And so, Lord, as we come to your word, I ask in the name of Jesus that by your spirit you speak a definite word for everyone here in the name of Jesus. I was reading my um, Bible and I, I come across this verse in Revelation chapter 3, verse 7, uh, chapter 7, verse 3. It says, do not damage the earth or the sea or the trees until we have marked the servants of our God with a seal on their foreheads. And I was saying, Lord, what are you saying here? And this is end times and um, talking about eschatological events. But I felt in that moment God is saying, 
that I'm marking my own out. In the midst of all that may be happening in the year to come, I'm going to mark my own out. And because you belong to God, I, 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 the word I have for you that God is going to mark you. There will be uncertainties in this coming year, but God is going to mark you. And when he puts a mark on you, he will say, for this one, do not touch my anointed. For this one, do not do my prophet any harm. There may be chaos, there may be uncertainties, there may be a shakings, but God is saying that I'm going to mark you out. And so I do believe that the God is going to visit us as a church, but also individually. A, I believe that there's a, going to be a visitation for distinction. Somebody should write that down. I believe there's going to be a visitation for distinction. That's why you'll be blending, blending, blending all the year. There's going to be a visitation that will cause you to stand out. I do believe that some people will be marked for significance and visibility this year. That the coming year, some people will be marked for significance and for visibility. In the midst of the crowd, you're going to be picked out. Along a lengthy queue, you will be pulled out and advanced forward. I believe that God is going to mark some people out for significance this year. I believe that God is going to mark some people out for visibility this year. That your years of obscurity is over. I believe that God is saying they're going to visit those who have waited, long waited for his salvation. They have waited for his salvation for a long time. That this year will be the day of your visitation. If that is you, say amen to that and grab them. That God will cause his faithful ones to rejoice. It will cause them to sing. It will cause them to dance. Some people will get dancing shoes this year. But in the midst of this, I also feel strongly that while things are happening and people are being marked out and people are excelling. Some people will be deceived. Some will be deceived into thinking that God cannot save. Or God will not save. Some will be deceived into thinking that there's no reward for righteousness. I'm thinking that I've been faithful all these years and nothing is happening. I see it happen around me, but nothing is happening to me. And so because of that, the, 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 the commitment is going to win. The heart will grow cold. Hear this. Revelation 22, verse 1. Verse 11 and 12. Say, so let the evil doer still do evil. And be filthy, still be filthy. And the righteous still do right. And the holy still be holy. See, I am coming soon. My reward is with me to repay according to everyone's work. I do believe that if you choose to believe a lie, to live for your comfort and your convenience, God will not force over you. But you will receive the reward of your choices. So as we go into 2024, do not be deceived. Don't hear the lie of the enemy. Don't hear the voice of the enemy telling you that God cannot save, that your own case is different. God has said, I will visit. I will make some people distinct. If he's going to make one person distinct this year, 
I'm going to be that person. That's your attitude. That's how to grab. That's how to change. Here. Life is not fair to anyone. If you're waiting, say, no, thinking that life will say, okay, she suffered enough. Let's just give her this. No. The devil says, he suffered enough, kick her down. Life is not fair to anyone. So if God says, I'm going to do something, jump up and grab it because that is for you. So when I talk of vi- distinction and visibility, what does that mean? It speaks that God is going, a marking off or distinguishing as different. It's when God puts a seal on you saying, don't touch my anointed, do my prophet no harm. It means a recognition or a noting of difference. That in this coming year, you will be noticed and your difference will be recognized. Somebody didn't hear me. It means that you'll be working so hard, being so faithful, where everybody's calling in sick, you're showing up. And you're taking for granted because part of the furniture. He said, in this year, your being different will be noticed and will be recognized. It means a discrimination. You know, when we use the word discrimination, it's like uh, in a negative word. But God is going to discriminate. That means he's going to treat you differently. He's going to give a special regard to you with favor. He's going to sort you out as different. Somebody should understand what I'm saying. That God is going to sort, when he sorts people out, he says, this one is the one I've chosen to favor. He has a basket of, of a basket where he's putting the people he's going to favor in this year. And he will sort you and put in that basket. Amen. And so when they are sifting for that position, you will be sifted to the next stage. And when they get to that stage, they will sift you to the next stage. And when you're standing between, the choice is between two people. Say, God will say, I've marked this one. This is mine. Somebody is not hearing me. It means that being treated as special, where you get a special attention of honor and favor. Special favorable treatment and passages will be given to you this year. A favorable treatment and passages. You know, in some place you really go some circles. I don't know if you, um, when you get to a certain airport, there's a, some areas you don't get to go into. Are you aware of that? You have to have a certain pass to go into those areas. And God is going to give you a pass that will give you access to areas that you're not allowed to go into. I'm not always the one speaking. Is that, this is not my usual way of speaking. If I'm not feeling this strongly, I won't be saying it. So, how do you get yourself prepared for distinction and visibility? God has said, I'm going to make some people distinct. I'm going to make some people visible this year. How do you prepare for that? If God said, I'm bringing harvest to you, how do you prepare to receive the harvest? A young couple, if you're expecting a baby, there's a way you prepare. You change certain things, move certain things. You, you visit the dump so many times, I don't get rid of certain things. You do your DIY painting, pe- 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 painting try to get the, There's a way you prepare if you know that you're going to be visited by God. So if you want to take a line, what I'm sharing with you today is preparing for distinction. 
I feel God, God, God wants to say to you to prepare, to dress yourself for where you're going, not where you're coming from. Somebody didn't hear that. You dress for where you're going, not for where you're coming from. You're walking to 2024, and God is going to do something unique in 2020. You dress yourself for 2024, not for 2023 that is past. How do you prepare for distinction? How do you prepare for what God wants to bring in this coming year? Daniel chapter 11, verse 32 to 35. I'm just going to bring out a few, few points from there, and then we'll go to pray. Daniel chapter 11, verse 32 to 35. Those who do wickedly against the covenant, he will corrupt by, with flattery. But the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. And those of the people who understand shall instruct many. Yet for many days they shall fall by sword and flame, by captivity and plundering. Now when they fall, they shall be aided with a little help. But many shall join them Join with them by intrigue. And some of the, those who, those of understanding shall fall to refine them, purify them, and make them white until the time of the end, because it is still for the appointed time. Now, this is not a very simple passage to understand, understand. but I'm not going to go into uh, trying to decode it. I just want to bring what I feel God is see How do we prepare for what he wants to bring in this year? Uh, we, this is an already fulfilled prophecy. Okay. And this whole of this passage in, in, in from, this, uh, from verse 24 of uh, Daniel 11 all the way to the end is, is uh, refers to somebody that re, in a, in a, in a lived long ago, Antiochus IV Epiphanes, who was one, who was one of, uh, uh, you know, he was a, a, a Greek, uh, you, know, you know, general who did a lot of havoc, havoc in the Jews. So this refers to, to him. This has been fulfilled. This passage in the Antioch refers to the little horn of Daniel chapter 7 to 8. If you read the book of Daniel, we're talking about the little horn, the, the, the vision of about the little horn. This is what he's referring to. He's talking about uh, Antiochus Epiphanes. I just tried, let me get that out of, the, out, out, of, out of the way. But from this, I'm, look, look, I'm reading this. Say, how do you prepare for what God wants to bring? One said, reject deception. He said, those who do wickedly against the covenant, he will corrupt by flattery. I'm avoiding going into the context, but I just cannot avoid it. You, you, you understand what happened when Antiochus came to the, uh, Jew, uh, to the Jews in Jerusalem, what he went over on Jer Jerusalem. Some Hellenist Jews adopted, you know, Greek style, and those ones were deceived. But a few, the Maccabees, stood still and contended against, uh, 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 against the ons onslaught of the enemy. I was saying that for us to enter into what God has for the coming year, just like those, uh, those uh, Maccabite Jews who stood st firm say that you have to reject deception because there's a tendency to be deceived that is going to come. It's going to become more prevalent as in the coming, coming year. When you buy into a lie, you lose out on what God plans to do in your life. You lose out on what God is planning to do in a particular dispensation. When God is moving in a particular way and you hear a lie and take that lie, you lose out. God's program doesn't work for you. It's on the move. You either key in or you're out. So for us, for us to enter into all that he has for us, all he's saying, all he's saying for your life, for us as a church, you have to say no to deception. Malachi 3, verse 13 to 14, say, you have spoken harsh words against me, says the Lord. Yet you say, how have we spoken against you? You have said it is in vain to serve God. What do we profit by keeping his command 
or by going about as mourners before the Lord of hosts. These are believers saying it is in vain to serve the Lord. Because they've been faithful, working with God for a long time, and it seems like it's not paying off. Has anyone told you that? See, this thing you're doing, where has it led you? All this you're truth telling and not telling the lie, where has it led you? The guys in the office who tell, who tell lies, they seem to be advancing. But you that is walking on the straight and narrow, it's like you're always ignored. And you're beginning to say, buy into this lie that it is, it is in vain to fear the Lord. Say, all your life you'll be serving, you'll be serving. You serve God daily in his house. You give your tithe, you give your offering, you support the work of God faithfully. But it looks like the other ones who are just playing games, they are the ones getting by. They are beginning to wonder, it's not fair, Lord. God is saying, don't buy into a lie. Don't buy into that deception. This will be prevalent in the coming year. And because of that, some people that are going to, that are going to draw back. They are going to retreat. They are going to grow cold. That's what um, 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 Matthew 24 verse 12 said. Because of the increase in lawlessness, the love of many will grow cold. The distinction we're talking about is for those whose love for God are still fervent. When your love grows cold, you disqualify yourself for being set apart. Does that make sense what I'm saying to you? So if you want to be partaker of what God is saying, what God wants to bring in this year, if you want to walk with him, want to be the one marked out to stand out, don't be deceived. Keep your fire burning. Go back to your first love. Secondly, you need to know God personally. He said, the people who know their God, they shall be strong and do exploits. And I know uh, Maccabite Jews, uh, Jews in Daniel 11 that stood against the invasion, against the, the corruption that, that, that was going on. said, those who know their God, they shall be strong. They will put their life on the line and they will do exploits for God. I do believe that your distinction in the coming year will be proportional to God's revelation of himself to you. You will always stand out to the extent God reveals himself to you. Revelation here, talking about knowledge of God and experience of God. What I'm saying is that a general knowledge of God is not enough for you to, it's not, it's not going to make you stand out. If you're going to stand out in this year, you have to know God personally in a, diff, in a new dimension. Oh, if you're going to know God as Jehovah Rapha, you have to lay hold on him until he heals you. Then you can say, he is my Jehovah Rapha. He is Rapha anyway, whether he heals you or not. But for him to be your Rapha, he has to heal you. You have to know him as your Rapha. For you to know him as your provider, you have to, in the midst of the bill pile of not know what to do, you hold on to him and he provides for you. Then you can say that he is the Lord, my provider, not the provider, my provider. Or I'm saying that in this year, God is wanting you to know him in a different dimension. There is an experience of God that he is, I, God is waiting to reveal himself to you in a new way. Show me any man, any woman who is significant, who stands out. And I will show you a man or a woman who has had an encounter with God who has had an experience of God in a particular dimension that you don't. So I'm saying that this year, for you to stand out, you need to know God personally. You need to ex experientially in a dimension that you never know before. 
Maybe you don't even have a walk with him. This For you to, be, to stand out, you have to start with having a walk with God. You have to know Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. You have to know that he died for you and that your sins were paid for when he went on the cross. He died over 2,000 years ago. But some people still go to hell. Not because the, he didn't pay for their sin, but because they didn't appropriate the payment he made. Somebody didn't hear me. I'm saying that if you don't know him, don't walk into 2024 casually like you. No, say, Lord, I want to give my life to you. I've walked my way. I've done this my own way. This year, I'm going to give all to you. And then you appropriate to yourself the price he paid on the cross. He becomes both your Lord and your Savior. And that when you do that, you now give him authorization to defend you, to protect you, to advance you because he can trust you. And if you know him, you're giving your life to him. That's elementary. He's saying in this year, for me to advance you, I want you to pursue me on a deeper level. Where do you want, to, want God to reveal himself to you? Are you trusting him for healing? He is still rougher. You have to pursue him until he heals you, until he becomes your rougher. Are you trusting God for provision? He is still Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides. But you have to pursue him and lay hold on him until he provides. Then you can say that he is my Jehovah Jireh. Jeremiah 9 verse 23, 24 says, Thus says the Lord, Do not let the wise boast in their wisdom. Do not let the mighty boast in their might. Do not let the wealthy boast in their wealth. But let those who boast, boast in this, that they understand and know me, that I am the Lord. I act with steadfast love, justice, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, says the Lord. Say, in this coming year, if there's going to be any boast, let your boast be that you know him. You know him personally. You know him on a personal level. You, you know him experientially. That's the call of God for us in this year. And so Hosea says, let us know, Hosea 6.3, let us know, let us press on to know the Lord. His appearing is as sure as the dawn. He's saying that when you press on to know him, certainly, cert there's a certainty he will appear to you. For everyone who will seek to know him this coming year, the Lord will appear to you. He will show himself to you. He will reveal himself to you. He will show a dimension of himself that you've never known before. Until Jacob laid hold on God and he was changed. His name was changed to Israel. Let us go on. Let us press on to know the Lord. He's appearing as sure as the dawn. He will come to us like the showers, like the spring rain that water the earth. Oh, that the Lord will come. Oh, that the Lord will appear. Oh, that the Lord will shower on you this year. And he will come if you will seek him. Knowing God personally requires an intentional investment of time in his word and in his presence. You spend time in the world, spend time in his presence. I'm not talking about you making a new year resolution. But I'm saying that this year you decide that you, every day you spend time in the word of God. Because all that, all that we can know about God is already revealed in his word. If you want to know him, you spend time in his word. Spend time in his presence. Spend time in the fellowship of God's people. Spend time in his house and you will get to know him. 
Make pursuing God your obsession this year. I've heard this, that God rewards obsession. Whatever you're obsessed about will reward you. Whatever you're obsessed ab about will reward you. If you're obsessed about God, he will reward you. So for us to enter into all God, all God, all God is saying this year, he's saying you have to reject deception, you have to know God personal, three, number three, you have to be strong in your spirit. You must be strong in the spirit because you, you need to deal with your certainties of the coming year. God's visitation does not remove all certain things. This that is fine, I'm going to make some people dicks. It doesn't mean that everything will be honky dory that there will be no, there will be challenges, there will be uncertainty, there will be shakings. But when you're strong, you'll be able to go through those. So being strong in this so that you will, be, you will not be moved from your secure and vantage position. When God moves you to a particular place and he places you there, if you're not strong, some things will move you out there. That's why you get a, a particular place and then uh, 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 you get angry and then you, get, you, and then you, you move out. But God has placed you here to have dominion. But because you're not strong in the spirit, you can't handle this one. You can't handle this one. You, you get moved out. So you need to be strong in your spirit so that you will not be moved out of your vantage position. So they'll be able to ward off the attacks of the enemy and be able to defend the ground God has given to you. The enemy will always contest your vantage position. When it gives you a position of importance, a position of prominence, a position that gives you advantage, the enemy will contest it. You have to be strong in your spirit to contest it. Hear me. As you go into this year, be alert, be aware. When God brings you to a place, there's a reason why he brought you there. Don't just give it up anyhow. Don't let your emotions, don't let your insecurities Oh, they say this, they say that, and who cares? You're on a mission. You're on a mission. God has sent you to have dominion. You are going to stand firm, refuse to be moved. You can only do that when you're strong in your spirit. Nahum chapter 2 verse 1 says, The he who scatters has come up before your face. So what do you do? The enemy has come to scatter. What do you do? He said, uh, man the fort, wash the road, straighten your flanks, Fortify your power mightly. When the enemy comes in front of you, what do you do? You don't run. You don't fret. You stand your position. You look straight on. You, get, you tighten your belt. I don't know if for African... Eh? Have you seen African women when they fight? You know, before trousers came, before women are, uh, began to wear trousers... If they are ready to fight, you know, they open their clothes like this and turn it like that. And then they get another one around. Pull it. If you're wise, run. <laughs> Tighten your belt. Stand your ground. Don't be afraid of them because the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. He has spoken concerning you. He's marked you for significance. He's marked you for di distinction. The enemy will try to push you around. You stand your ground say, I'm not shifting. I'm not moving. The Lord has given me this ground, given me this position. You will not take me away from this position. Stand your ground. First Peter said, First Peter 5, uh, um, 8 to 9 said, discipline yourselves, keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. What did he say? Resist him steadfast in your faith. For you know that your brothers and sisters throughout the whole world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. The enemy is prowling around looking for. He, he, he said, it's, it's not a roaring lion, it's like a roaring lion. Do you understand that? The devil is not the lion. Jesus Christ is the lion of the tribe of Judah. But the enemy roars to harass. And so that you run. Say, 
Stand your ground, resist him. And when you resist him, he will flee from you. To be strong in the spirit, you must be watchful. You must be alert. You must be watchful in prayer. This year be a year where you pursue God in prayer. I've made a resolution. This year, I'm going to pursue God in prayer. On Fridays, when we come to pray here, show up. For what God said he's going to do, for it, for it to become our reality, we have to pursue God in prayer. We have to travel in prayer. He said, as soon as Zion traveled, he brought four children. Nothing is going to happen except you, you conquer in the place of prayer. Except you want to be ordinary. The people who are ordinary, they eat, they wake up, they go about, and nothing happens. But if you're going to be the one who God's hand is on, you're going to be the one who travels in the place of prayer. Be strong. Be watchful in prayer. You also have to fortify yourself with the word of God. Spend time in the word. Eat it. Jeremiah said, I found your word and I ate it. And your word was to me the joy and the rejoicing of my, of my heart. You must be strengthened by genuine fellowship. The fellowship of God's people, but also by genuine relationships. I do believe that some important relationships will be key to you being distinct and significant in this coming year. Somebody should hear this. There are some important relationships, important friendships that is going to be significant for where God is taking you in this coming year. You must therefore descend those relationships. You must descend them. You must pursue them. You must cultivate them. You must celebrate those relationships. Finally, for us to apprehend what God is saying for us this year, we must be ready for an adventure. Must be ready for an adventure. There will be opportunities in the coming year for you to stand out. When they come, don't pass it. Don't pass on it. There will be opportunity for you to make a difference. Don't pass on it. The opportunity for you to defend the faith, to say that you belong to Christ, to say that you're a child of God. Don't pass on it. That's where you become significant. That's where when you be marked out. But a lot of times, we, those opportunities come and then we, we sidestep. We zip it. I don't want to offend anyone. But you're okay to be offended. I don't want to say, because if I say I'm a Christian, then somebody will be offended. Whether you say it or not, somebody will be offended anyway. So don't pass the opportunity for you to stand up, for you to defend the faith this year. The opportunity for you to stand true to your convictions. What do you stand for? Let me ask. Do you stand for anything? In this year, coming year, if you're going to stand out, if you're going to be the one God has marked for the extinction, you have to stay true to your convictions. And in this coming year, there will be opportunities for you to deal with adversity without changing your theology. Where you handle adversity well without changing your theology, without changing what you believe. Where you don't change your theology so you can accommodate your tragedy. We're going to stand true in the faith. This is what will mark you out this year. So you must be bold and courageous to confront the challenges that will come this year as you take new ground for God in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 110 verse 3 says, your people will offer themselves willingly on the day you lead out your forces on the holy mountains. From the womb of the morning, like dew, your youth will come to you. You know, the market base in, 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 the, in the prophecy of Daniel, they offered themselves willingly. I was saying that if, if you're going to be, stand, you're going to stand out, you have to be ready to take, to take, to step up for an adventure this year. God said to Joshua, in Joshua 1.9, 
I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. God has spoken of what he's going to do. They will become a reality if you walk into it. When God brings you into unfamiliar spaces, you're going to need to be strong and courageous to take those ground. I don't know, we had a friend called it imposter syndrome. When people come to a place where they say, no, no, it's not me. I, no, I can't do this. I can't do this. Nobody here suffers from imposter syndrome. God brings you into a space because he's giving you all it takes to occupy that space. And so whenever space you find yourself, say, is it me? Yes. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let's stand.